Hey guys, how's it going? This is Perger of MediaAlternatives.net, your newest website for alternative news and media. Uh, I had a news story I wanted to go over today with you on. Uh, it's the only one that I have for you this evening. And it's entitled, Obama to Offer Nuclear um Umbrella to Israel. Now, this is my first time hearing this term, nuclear umbrella. But apparently what's going on is yes the great Obama who's gonna quote change everything and change every paradigm and make everything different and turn Washington upside down uh, he he still enforces the same policy that all the other presidents uh, all the other modern presidents have um, endorsed which is blind support for Israel so what he is saying is that if Iran nukes Israel then America is going to step in. We're going to give them a nuclear war guarantee, in effect, and we're going to go ahead and bomb Iran, Iran in the, in Israel's stead, basically. So, hey, they bomb you, we're going to bomb them. And it's kind of funny because it's a double standard. Because I'm sure even if Israel nukes Iran, we're still going to nuke them anyway, just to say, hey, look, Israel, we're here for you. So, if Iran bombs them they get bombed. Uh, if Israel bombs them, they get bombed by us too. So they get double nuke. So, uh, just to kind of go into the article here, it says, uh, let me look at it here, uh, President-elect Obama report, reportedly intends to offer a strategic pact with Israel promising a devastating U.S. nuclear response against Iran in the event Iran launches a nuclear attack on Israel. The move would be designated ostensibly to increase the deterrent factor against an attack on Israel. Yet the pledge seems rather curious in so much as Iran not only has no nuclear arsenal, but is known to be is not known to be working on any such arsenal at the present time. Uh, and this is an antiwar.com article. So, of course, they're going to pretty much bring you the facts on that. Uh, this, uh, there is a mainstream version of this article, and I forget what site it's on. But that article, I don't believe, really talks at it from this angle. Uh, of course, antiwar.com, they have uh, a lot of great people there. Scott Horton always breaking down the truth for people. And so, of course, when you're reading it from their website they're going to tell you the truth and say well hey look there is no proof that these guys are working on any news which there is no proof you know and if you want to debate me on that you know so be it but the fact of the matter is they're not working on any nukes if they were working on nukes then the IAEA would know and they would not have confirmed the non-diversion of nuclear materials from any of their civilian programs there in Iran so you know, for all the plutonium, well, not plutonium, but for all the uranium they have that they're trying to enrich to a measly 3% for civilian use, yes, there is a difference between 3% and 99.9% .9 that you would have to put in a nuclear warhead. And they're only enriching to a 3% enrichment so that they can go ahead and use it in civilian nuclear reactors. Uh, in order for Iran to even think about doing anything now, they would have to kick out the IAEA inspectors, which of course is going to set off a red flag immediately to the international community. Firstly, secondly, they'd have to go ahead and enrich the uranium that they already have from three from three percent to ninety nine point nine percent in these centrifuges, which are so sensitive that there was a there was an Iranian scientist whose fingerprint residue made one of the centrifuges explode because of the few microns added on that imbalanced the centrifuge that it was spinning so fast they exploded because of the imbalance and the vibration it caused so this is really 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 you know they call it rocket science but hey this is really complicated science and these guys have to do it right so even that being done it would still take them anywhere between seven to ten years to actually make a new which means that you have seven to ten years to talk to these guys to work through everything you want to and then you know and let's say they do get a new you know this is the same country that hasn't attacked anybody in 200 years you know you can say oh well they want to wipe Israel off the map well you know what and, and this is a funny situation to me 
because of course in mainstream media they tell you well hey uh, these guys they they call for a second holocaust they're going to cause a second holocaust well if you really hated Jews that much it doesn't seem to me like you would have Jews in your own cabinet or you wouldn't have Jews in government you know if you're trying to ethnically cleanse the Jews then it seems to me that you would start at home you know when you're when you're cutting your grass when your kid wants to cut other people's grass you say well hey you cut your house's grass first before you go and do it for other people because you can't do anything in anyone else's house unless you have your own house straight first so I guess what I'm saying is that if Iran really is so anti-Jewish well then I would think that they would be marginalized in their own country don't you think and so they're telling you well hey these guys hate the Jews they hate Israel they're gonna nuke them if they get a nuke uh, and like I said they there's no proof that they're even trying to get a nuke right now and even if they were trying to get a nuke there's no evidence that they would even nuke anyone with it they would rather you know to me it sounds like a smart idea I think this is what North Korea said that they're trying to do they just want a nuke for the for the sheer uh, intimidation uh, the the sheer fact that it's going to allow for them to have another chess piece on the board it's going to give them extra leverage during negotiations America is going to take them more seriously you know you see what happens to countries who don't have nukes who we want to invade? We just stroll straight in. Look at it. Look at Iraq. You know these guys had quote WMDs. Every last one of the WMDs we gave to them during the Iran-Iraq war, so that they could be a counter to Iran. And then we had to come in and clean up our mess. You know, back during back during uh, Iran uh, when there when the Shah was overrun. I mean, we were we had our hands all in that too. I mean, it seems to me like uh, if we didn't have our hands in all this stuff, then maybe the world would be a little bit better off. But back to the point. The point is, it doesn't make any sense for us to be giving war guarantees to countries like Israel when, firstly, there's no proof that Iran is even working on a nuke, and even if they were, we have plenty of time before they actually finish one out. And there's no saying that even if they did have one, that they would use it. You know, it's like Ahmadinejad said, uh, what's so important about a nuke? It doesn't change minds. And that's what I think America doesn't, doesn't realize here. And like I said, that's beside the fact that there's no proof that they're even working on anything. And this is directly from the IAEA itself. So... No, I uh, just wanted to go over that story with you and uh, have any comments hey go ahead and post them uh, you want to see the whole thing go ahead and go to go to mediaalternatives.net you can take a look at this story along with many other stories uh, you can check out interviews from antiwar.com uh, just because we hold them in pretty great esteem you know I don't have nearly the connections that they do there and therefore I can't necessarily interview other people like they do um and that's it you guys have a great evening peace